Here we'll go through a few examples of applying the Welch Powell algorithm in order to color a graph. So remember our aim here is to color the graph in as few colors as possible and the rules that we have to abide by are that two vertices can't be the same color if they share an edge. So with this graph here for example you couldn't have B being blue and A being blue because they've got this edge here in between. So the way that the algorithm works is the first thing we do is we order the vertices in terms of their degree. Or I guess before you do that you need to work out the degree of each vertex. So this is the number of edges coming away. So for B it's 3 because we've got 1, 2, 3 here. For A you've got 4. For C there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. For E there's 3. For G, there's 3. For H, there's 4. For D, there's 4. And for F, there's 3. So the order of our vertices, if we go in order, um, so the largest is C, and then we've got D, H, and A. So D, H, and A. So they're all essentially on the same level. Um, and then we've got F, B, and E, and G. So the ordering here, obviously if the vertices have the same degree, then we could have the ordering here slightly different. But the important thing, I guess, is just that we've got these different levels. So here C was 6, D, H, and A was 4 and then F, B, E, and G with 3. Have we got all of our vertices? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. So then when we go through, what we do is we take our first color. So color 1. Um, and let's make it, yeah, this will be okay. So this ready orange color. So we're going to go through and we have to basically proceed through in this order. Or at least we consider this, then we consider all of these, and then we consider all of these. But it's fine just to always go in the order that you wrote it down. So first, um, I've got C. So C definitely has to be color 1. So always your highest degree vertex should correspond with your first color. Um, so I've colored C. And now I consider D, H, and A, and I'll color them if they're not adjacent to C. So remember, adjacent means that they share an edge. Um, I can't do D because you can see we've got this line connecting D to C. So not D. H, does H have a direct edge? No, it doesn't. So I will color H. I then consider A, and A's already got a direct line to C, so I don't color A. So my first color is just C and H, and then I keep on going. So F, B, E, and G. So F is connected to C, so not F. Um, B is directly connected to C, so not B. E is directly connected and G is directly connected. So yeah, summarizing for our color one, we've got just C and H. Now for color two, so we move to our next color. And so let's go a different color. So let's go a blue. So in this case, now we're gonna go through exactly the same way in the same order. So first we're gonna do D and then we need to consider A. Now it looks like A and D are directly connected by this edge here, so we can't color A the same color. And then we'll move to our next set of vertices, F, B, E, and G. So F is not directly connected to D, so F will do. And then B um, is not directly connected to D, but it is directly connected to F, so we can't do B. We consider E. E is directly connected to D, 
and we consider G as well. So G, it's not connected directly to D, but it is correct um, connected directly to F, so we can't do G. So that's all for our second color. So all we got here was D and F. Um, we'll grab our next color now. So we've got a green type color. This is our color three. And we'll go through. So our first one will be A. And then we consider B. Now B is directly connected to A, so we can't do B. Um, how about E? There's no connection there, so E is OK. And G, G is OK as well. Um, because it's not directly connected to E and it's not directly connected to A. So we had some riser up here as well we did E and G and then that leaves us with our last color so we've got A, E and G and then our fourth color will be this one here so this gives us our final graph coloring now as we said before we don't actually know whether it's going to be um, optimal or not um, the way that, you know, often we have to be able to tell whether something's going to be optimal or not will be um, if we could find an inner structure um, like this. So if there was something like this, you know, four vertices all connected together and connected to each other, or sometimes you can get some other structures as well. Um, but that's not important because all that we have to really do here is make sure that we apply the algorithm and apply it correctly. So our final colouring is this and our guess for the chromatic number in this case um, is 4 because we needed 4 colours. Okay so let's try again with another graph. So here applying the algorithm we need to first look at all the vertices and work out the degree. So we've got 4, 2, 3, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, and 3. So in order we've got G and then the other we've got a whole lot of 3's here so G, C, D, oh, sorry I missed H before, H is 2, um, B, I, J, F, and then our ones that are coloured two, we've got E, A, and H. Now, have I got all of my vertices here? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten vertices. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, so we're all good to start our colouring. So again, we'll go color one, make it here. So color one, we start with G. So G is going to be that color. We look at C. C is connected to G, so it's no good. We we'll look at D, and D is not connected to G. So we'll color D in that color as well. Um, look at B. Is B connected to either of those? No, it's not. So B is good as well. We'll look at I. I is connected to G, so we skip I. J is connected to D, so we skip J. F is connected to B, so we skip F. E is connected to G. A is connected to B, and H is connected to B as well. So that's all we can do for color one. We'll go for color two now. So C first. And then we look at I. I is connected to C, so skip I. Um, look at J. J is connected to C. We look at F. So F's not connected to C, so we can do F. We look at E. E is not connected to a blue yet, so draw E. We look at A. A is not connected to any blue yet, so we color A. And then H is also not connected so 
it's only connected to B and G, so they're a different colour, so H, we're all good to go blue as well. And then our next colour is green, so we go I, and then the only vertex we've got left to do is J. Is J connected to anything? Nope. So we've got that, and now we've coloured all of the vertices, and in this case we get a chromatic number of 3. So we can always be um, a little bit more sure when we get a chromatic number of 3 because as soon as you have a triangle um, somewhere within the graph, so three vertices all connected to each other, then you know you're going to need three colours. So for instance this triangle here, we know that we're going to need at least three, so if we can colour it in exactly three, then we can be sure that that's the lowest number. With the previous one, we'd need to investigate probably a little bit further to see whether it's actually got a chromatic number of four and whether it's maybe possible to do it in um, within three colours. Um, but again, as we're saying, when we're applying the Welsh Power algorithm, um, that's all we need to do. Just make sure that we're, you know, applying it um, as best we can and then the number that we get at the end well that's what we'll say that our chromatic number is. Let's do one final example so even more vertices in this case so again count the degree is the first thing that we do so we've got 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for E, 4 for G, 4 for A, 2 for B, 2 for K, 3 for L, 3 for F 4 for J, 2 for C. Now I, we're going to say that, um, yeah, this, these ones coming off here um, are actually coming away from I, so it's got 4. We'll say that H has 4, and that's all our vertices. So um, writing them in order, we've got E, and then for the, vo the 4 vertices, we've got D, H, G, A, I, J, okay, I think that's all of our fours. Now our threes, we've got L and F, and then our twos, We've got C, K, and B. So again, just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so we've labelled all of our vertices. Let's start with colour 1. So colour 1, so E will be that colour. Then we look at D. Is D connected to E? Yes, so skip D. Is H connected to E? Yes, so skip H. Is G connected to E? Yes. Is A connected to E? Where's A? A's over here, and yep, it's got the direct connection. So we'll skip A as well. I, I is over here, and it is not connected to E. So we color I. Then we look at J. Is J connected to any of the reds yet? It's not connected to E and it's not connected to I, so we can color J as well. We'll look at L. L is not connected to anything yet, so we can do L. we look at F. F is connected to I, so we'll skip F. we look at C. C is connected to I, so we'll skip C. we look at K. K is connected to L, so we skip K, and B is connected to L as well. So that's all for our first color. Let's go for our second colour, so D, um, and then we've got H, H is not connected to D, so it's good to go blue, G is connected to D, so we skip G, we look at A, A is connected to H, so we skip H, um, we've already coloured I, J and L, so we go to F. F is connected to D, we can see the long connection there, so we skip F. Look at C, C is connected to I and E, so we can do C as a blue. Look at K, K is connected only to L and A, and so K 
we can do and then B um, yeah B is not connected to any blues yet so we can do B as well okay next color go green so we look at G so G now A is A already is A connected to G no so we can do A the same color and then we only have F to consider is F connected to anything yet nope so F and again we can obtain this chromatic number of three so this is how to apply the Welch Powell algorithm um, you can see even for large graphs there is some decision making in progress but basically once you've got this order sorted out you're really just applying the algorithm so you're just proceeding in order coloring it if you can moving on to the next one if you can't alright good luck